Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to talk about a question that I get asked quite a lot, which is why don't you install pip or virtualenv globally or any other Python package uh, globally on your Linux system? And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that today. So let me jump into that. Oh, <laughs> we got a follow notification. Great. Perfect. Um, so the thing about global packages, I have basically three reasons that I don't install them globally. The first is probably the easiest to explain in that some machines that I have access to, I do not have root on them. So I am unable to do, you know, sudo pip install or, um, or sudo apt install. So in those situations, I have to use the packages or I have to use the user space, which I don't need to use root to access. Uh, the second reason that I don't use system installed things is, uh, <laughs> um, Debian does some strange things to the pip and virtual env packages. I'll actually show you uh, Ubuntu focal bash. Uh, and recently they've actually chosen some, oops, it's supposed to be RM. Uh, recently they've chosen some interesting ideas on how they're going to package virtual envs. Let me do apt update and app install virtual env. Note that I'm doing this in Docker because I don't actually want to modif modify my external system. So I'm, I'm just demoing this, you know, using Docker here. Um, this will install a bunch of packages. We're particularly looking for the virtual env package here. Um, and I'll show you. So first we'll make a virtual env and we'll delete it. Virtual env, vm, uh, just so I can give you like a fair comparison between the time it takes on uh, Debian's version, packaged version of virtual env and you know, the, the actual version of virtual env that you would get from PyPI, because Debian modifies packages of the system and sometimes does things that, in my opinion, make no sense, like what they've, what, what they've done here. Um, but first, I just want to make sure that it's cached. And so now that everything's cached, this is the uncached time. Uh, if we were to make another virtual env, this will go from the cache. And you'll see that it's, <laughs> it takes about the same amount of time as it did from the cache. Uh, but if we go outside of here, and I'm using, in this case, what version? I'm using virtual env 20.0.30. If I do virtual env vmv, you'll see that it takes 217 milliseconds, so almost 10 times faster, actually, <laughs> even more than 10 times faster uh, than, you know, inside here. And if we do the, the cached version, it's taking 139 milliseconds, so much, much faster than uh, Debian's version. And the reason it's faster than Debian's version is they have split up all of these packages into uh, a bunch of different things for, for whatever reason. And in fact, if we look inside this virtual env that it created, we have all of these packages installed that you know I wouldn't like need to install because they're usually bundled as part of pip. And these might conflict with my packages that I want in my you know, tool or library or whatever. Uh, and you'll just compare um, normal virtual env installed nothing. So there's no packages here. And in fact, if I were to, you know, <laughs> uninstall one of these, because, oh, I don't I don't need, I don't know, dislib. I'm not using dislib. So if we do pip uninstall dislib, and then, you know, once we've uninstalled that, cool. Um, I have suddenly broken pip, <laughs> which is which is wonderful. Um, but anyway, this is this is the thing that I'm I'm really grumpy about. Okay, but that's the second reason is Debian makes modifications, and I'd rather use the upstream packages, which you know are maintained by the upstream maintainers, and like you know, reporting bugs to Debian is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, but that's the second reason, and the third reason is installing packages to the system can sometimes break system packages. Um, so some of the things that I have installed on my machine right now depend on Python packages. So you can see like, you know, Eurolib3, for instance, is probably dependent on something. If we do aptitude y this, and I'll actually link my, um, my video about, you know, the various apt commands that I'm running here in the, in the description. Um, and actually the reason that this question came up at all is because I posted a video about making a virtual env from nothing where you don't in system install these. And so this is kind of the, the follow-up to that. 
but yeah, you can see like Eurolib 3 is used by several packages on my system. And if I were to change the version installed globally, it potentially breaks my operating system. And this is even true inside Docker. I've seen cases where like I've installed my application to the system Python inside Docker and it will break other components that are running in that Docker container. So I, I tend to leave the system alone as much as possible and use virtual lines everywhere. Uh, and that brings us to our last little bit, which is uh, how do I make VirtualEnv available uh, to use for the rest of my system? Because I continue to use VirtualEnv, as you can see here, uh, somewhat globally and you know a little bit transparently. But I'll, I'll show you how that works. Uh, so the way that I do that is I make a VirtualEnv inside of my home directory. I'm actually going to delete it for the sake of this video so I can show you kind of how I would do that. So if I say... And we hash dash r to get rid of the hash cache. If I do which virtual env right now, you'll see that I don't have virtual env installed. And you know, if I virtual env vm, it will not work because I don't have virtual env installed. Uh, but following that video that I showed before, we're going to make a virtual env from nothing. curl location output virtual env.py z uh, bootstrap.pypa.io slash virtual env.py z. So that'll download virtual env.py z. I then will run the virtual env.py z and I will put uh, a virtual env into tilde opt vf. And so this is like where my, you know, my personal virtual env lives, where I install the packages that I use more, more regularly. And then I will do opt vm bin pip install. And here I will install virtual env. And then uh, <laughs> I actually now have virtual env available, but it's because I put a sim link inside my bin directory in my home directory. Uh, so if we look at this, you'll see that bin virtual env is a sim link to opt vm bin virtual env. And so this, this allows me to do you know, which virtual env and resolve that here. Uh, but this is a sim link into that, that virtual of my home directory. And that's how I install all of the tools that I keep globally on my system. Uh, now, I don't manually set this up. I use uh, a bit of configuration management, and you'll actually see that I'm missing some of my packages, so some of the stuff will not work properly. Um, but I actually use a Puppet setup here, and Puppet will install these packages um, auto automatically in a, in a way. But anyway, that's how I set up packages on my system. That's also why I don't use the system pip or the system virtual env. Uh, hopefully this was useful. If you guys have additional questions that you want to see, uh, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.